why do you think blogging is valuable? I mean, at the end of the day, blogging is one of the best ways to build your topical authority across the board. And so people who have very bare bones websites, it's hard to rake. And you know, even if you have a great backlink profile, uh, the more content that you have on your site just tells Google and readers across the board what you're about. And you kind of gain that expertise and that authoritativeness that you need to have a top spot in the ranks. So your blog over time adds those keywords across the site and just kind of helps, you know, tell everyone who you are and why you have the, a reason to speak out on this great subject that you're trying to rank for. And Stephen G. So what about uh, other content? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, Meg. Sorry. There's a bit of a lag. Yeah. Yeah. Now I was just going to ask, uh, what about other content on the website? You know, not only blogs, but let's say if you're an e-commerce website, you know, all of the listings, the product listings that you have, for example, do those rank as well? And do they have an equal weightage compared to blogs? Yeah. So the way that we kind of look at it, if you were to kind of break down what ranks and how it all ranks, all sort of stuff. So each keyword is going to have a, an assigned difficulty that is going to be on a scale of one to 10 and or one on, excuse me. And that's going to be kind of, you know, just your snapshot overview of how easy or hard it is to rank. And so if it's a product keyword, you know, maybe it's a model number, those ones are a little bit more like simpler to rank for because they're so niche and they're so specific compared to something like best computers, 2024, like, you know, everyone's trying to go after that keyword. You have all the top dogs trying to get that spot. And so when it comes to your product pages or your service pages specifically, you know, you really kind of have a upper hand if you optimize them correctly, because people are not good at SEO and some people are. So if you can kind of just get that upper badge from the get go and drive links to your site, have great content, content that speaks to readers and answers all of their search and tech questions, you really kind of put yourself at an advantage from the start. Go for it. I was going to ask you, these, these days, I mean, a lot of people talk about AI. And I mean, do you do you use AI for, you know, your writing and writing of your blogs? Yeah, so we don't use any AI for writing content. We look at AI as a, as a tool. And so, you know, we think that AI is still very early in what it can produce. And, you know, even most recently, Google came out with a update that was targeted AI content. And so they're still trying to figure out where spam meets high quality and where that line is drawn in the sand. And so from day one, like our, you know, kind of core thesis has always been to just produce the highest quality content. And we know that that's going to be done by having human written writers and human editors and just making sure that nothing else matters except for quality. So. Yeah, we don't dabble in that. We won't, if people ask us to, we just say, hey, it's not a good fit. If you want AI content, like we'll use tools and AI tools to kind of help facilitate our process, but we're not just going to use AI as like a replacement. But do you use AI as a start? So maybe just, you know, get a basic framework of the article ready and then have somebody edit it? Or is AI from your perspective totally out? So we use, like, we'll use AI to kind of assist, like, with editing. So, like, you know, maybe Grammarly has some suggestions and we have a, like, high quality editor who's reading it and still editing it across the board. Or we'll use AI to help create the skeleton briefs. So, like, the, you know, the which headings should be placed where and, like, what FAQs are going accordingly and all that sort of stuff. Really bare bones items of that content. But when it comes to any sentences, like, even, like, the first sentence, like, nothing is written by AI. So we use, we have a team of 10 plus writers right now. And, you know, they're just, their full-time job is to just write high quality content and focus on that. So we've learned over time that, you know, people try to squeeze in AI content and we have really strict guidelines about that. And so it just kind of comes down to ensuring that we have expectations and we know what works right now. Um, who knows, maybe AI will develop in such a way that we can use it down the road, but Right now, we're just not willing to run that risk for clients and content and just kind of seeing what could happen. We don't want to mess with it. So Google does not favor AI written content, right? No, actually kind of the opposite. So their most recent update was set to target AI spammy content. Unfortunately, they're not always the best at gauging. Like no one can really, you know, at eye level see AI versus not AI content, but 
we just see that there's a lot of abuse going on in terms of how quickly it's being produced. And with that, since people have a lower threshold or a lower barrier en to entry with their content, they're just uploading it as much as they can. And so with that, Google sees this overabundance of spam coming across the board. And so they're trying to decipher good versus bad. And so just because it's on their radar, they're going to be much more strict than they were, you know, five years ago or even before AI came out. And so for that reason, like it's just not even worth the risk to us. And so we just want to make sure that writers know what they're doing. They have a good understanding of the client and the client's goals and just, you know, write good content based on all of those kind of expectations that we get from the start.